morning. It's Tuesday, May 21st, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of hope for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Fruit of the Spirit, Part 1, Kindness. Our scripture is Galatians, Chapter 5. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Paul the Apostle uses fruit as a metaphor to explain the way God prepares and uses his own nature and strength in us to be a blessing to others. It's really a great metaphor. Of course, God doesn't need my approval. I'm just celebrating the truth here. Fruit from our earth's bounty is a continuing staple of refreshment, nourishment, and a tasty blessing in my life. If you ask what I had for breakfast and fruit is not mentioned, call the FBI because you're talking to an imposter or my evil clone. You'll probably find I've been kidnapped and put on a boat to Shanghai. I love fruit. Over the next week or so, I'd like for us to enjoy examining together the fruit of God's Spirit. There are nine kinds of fruit in this cluster of heavenly produce, and today we begin with kindness. There are a ton of words that are associated with a person being kind, benevolent, caring, compassionate, generous, giving, thoughtfulness, consideration, helpfulness, charity, tenderness, sympathetic, tolerance, understanding, courtesy, decency, altruistic, gracious, patient, cordial, (laughs) just to name a few. All those words have their birthplace in the human heart. Kindness cannot be enacted by presidential fiat, Congress passing a law, or the United Nations International Court. Rather, it's evoked by a gift of human usefulness, which includes another heart, usually one that's in need. In Acts chapter 11, we find at Antioch a church full of believers exercising the gift of kindness. One of their own, Agabus, is a prophet, and he predicts a coming famine in the Roman Empire. Knowing the church at Jerusalem is already experiencing hard times, they didn't wait for the prophecy to hit, which it did several years later. Instead, they immediately took up an offering for their fellow believers in Jerusalem and sent it with Paul and Barnabas. I know what that's like. Elizabeth and I have experienced some rough times financially over the years. Sometimes it was self-inflicted just spending unwisely. At other times, the causes were just a matter of life happening. We've had family and friends who helped us, and one particularly kind, anonymous helper who just sent unsolicited funds through the mail. During one crisis of our ministry, I was coming to the end of ministry in one church and had nowhere to go. A couple of dear, co-laboring ministers recognized the signs of depression in me and made it their mission to get me out of my routine. A lunch, a time of listening, and some prayer later, their kindness gave me some hope. It proved to be salvation for my sanity and a strength for the journey. During that same period, there was a meeting that had all the signs of a lynch mob with the pastor's neck as the center of the agenda. One of the leaders stood up and gently but firmly challenged those who were conspiring to push me out the door, and God used his leadership to change the whole tenor of that group. His kindness to stand with me was the difference between calm reason and a broken spirit. Kindness cannot be overrated. For you today, let's let Scripture finish our devotional thought on kindness today. Proverbs 11.30, the seeds of good deeds become a tree of life. And then Romans 12.8, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.